Hi, this is Frank Taylor with Nature at Your Door. And today I want to continue my series of discovering things that you can find in your yard, an empty lot near your house, in your neighborhood, or a local park or a fence row. And they're fascinating because these are things that everybody calls weeds. And I am particularly fascinated by these plants that are called weeds, and I first identified them. I found out that each had a name, a special biology, and almost all of them have a very unique history, or ethnobotany, or how these plants were used by peoples in various cultures, both settlers here in Americas, in the past, in Europe, and also by indigenous peoples. Today, we're gonna to talk about chickweed, and I'm gonna show you five ways to absolutely positively identify this plant as common chickweed, which is actually very good to eat. And it's the first step if you're gonna to look to eat things in nature, the things that you find, you better be sure what they are because many plants are toxic. And then I'll talk about the ethnobotany and some interesting things about its biology. So stay tuned for five ways you can positively identify common chickweed and learn about some of its ethnobotanical, cultural, and historical uses and how it, it's even used today. Stay tuned. Right here in your backyard, you never know what you're gonna find. And here's the make this invasive. It's like top. Dogwoods are flowering. And I just took a couple swipes terrestrial environment. Uh, produce seed pollen. And it's so here's my door. Here's my yard. And right here, right next to me, are about five different plants that we call weeds that are actually edible and have significant historical and cultural uses. The one I'm gonna to talk to you about today is chickweed. And chickweed is growing right here, and I purposely waited to mow the grass around my house so I could show you this particular plant. And so today we're gonna to talk about chickweed and how to be 100% certain this is chickweed, and we'll talk about its ethnobotany, its history and some interesting things about its biology. So the first thing you want to look for to identify chickweed is these white star-shaped flowers. The flowers seem to have 10 petals, but if you break them apart, you'll find out that there's actually just five petals and they're just deeply, deeply cleft or deeply separated. The second thing to look for is opposite leaves. The leaves are oval shaped with a little bit of a point and they're arranged in an opposite manner on the stem. The third thing to look for is a row of fine hairs on the stem. Look in between the leaf nodes. So there's a leaf and then a section of stem, a leaf, a section of stem. And what you'll see if you look at it really close up, it has like kind of like a mohawk only one narrow part of the stem has these hairs on it. So the fourth detail to look at to confirm positively that you've got common chickweed, Stellaria media, is to look for that mohawk, that line of fine hairs in between the nodes, and you'll see that that line of fine hairs will rotate its location from node to node to node by about 90 degrees on the stem. So that's another really good way to make sure of what this is. And the fifth thing to look at to see if it's really chickweed is you can gently break this stem like this and pull it apart. You'll find that the inner core is elastic and the outer part will separate. So 100% confirmation Stellaria media. One, look for the tiny white flowers that have 10 petals. No, actually five petals. Look for opposite leaves that come to a point and don't have hairs on them. Third, look for the mohawk-like thin line of hairs between leaf whorls. Look to see that in between those nodes, that line of fine hairs rotates around the stem. And lastly, pull the stem apart 
and see if the inner side is elastic. And now you know for sure with those five things, you've got common chickweed. So how does chickweed get its name? Well, the chickens love to eat it and they really do. It's really great nutritious food for chickens and chickens will just tear into it. So when people observed it, that's why they called this chickweed. Its scientific name is Stellaria media. So Stellaria means star, which is associated with the flower, and media means middle. So I'm not sure if this means star in the middle of the sky or star in the middle of a open area. The study of scientific names is always very interesting. So common chickweed, Stellaria media, is not native to the United States. It's native to Eurasia. It's native to Europe and parts of, of Asia. And how did it get here? Again, it was brought here by the early settlers who valued it both for food for their stock, like their chickens, but also for its value to be eaten. Chickweed is high in vitamin A and vitamin C and many other vitamins and minerals. It has a nice flavor and people say that it tastes kind of like corn silk or raw corn. It's been compared in nutritional value to spinach. The chickweed was really popular in the 1800s, planted and grown in gardens, and maintained this status well into the early 1900s. So there begins the question, why don't more people eat chickweed? Well, part of the reason is that chickweed doesn't transport well. Chickweed has a very poor storage life. And if one is gonna eat chickweed, you gotta pick it and eat it fresh. If it, you put it in the fridge or if you try to store it, it'll go bad very, very quickly. So it fell away from the marketplace for a vegetable to be sold and shipped, it has to have a good shelf life. You either have to be able to refrigerate it or freeze it. You have to be able to harvest it and then store it and transport it and bring it to market and then have a certain shelf life in the market. So chickweed doesn't have this, so it fell away from our consciousness. So the average person doesn't eat it because they can't find it at the market. Vegetables that ship well include things like carrots and celery and onions and potatoes and green peppers and tomatoes. And so those are the things that are produced in farms and sold. If Delaria media, if chickweed had a good shelf life after you harvest it, it would be a part of our diet today for sure. Chickweed had also had many medicinal uses. It was used as a cooling agent or astringent. People would make a poultice of it, which is kind of like a mashed up mass of the particular plant species and place it against the skin and wrap it up against the skin. It is said to have cooling properties, astringent properties, and anti-inflammatory characteristics. It was also taken as a digestive because it's high in fiber. Remember in my programs, I want to show you things and identify things for you that you're going to find outside your door and that would be flowering right now near your house. I'm not really an advocate of going out and encouraging people to eat these things because a lot of these plants are not growing in controlled situation. I mean, you may not know if there's herbicides on it, pesticides, plants that are near roads or factories can be high in heavy metals or PCBs. So you need to take caution with this. And again, I advocate that if you're interested in eating some of these kinds of plants and finding them, go to some of these foraging websites or find a group in your area where you live with some experts that know how to identify the plants, how to harvest them, when to eat them, how to prepare them, and how to do it safely. But why is it so important to be able to identify them with certainty? Well, because there are toxic lookalikes. And for example, Stellaria media looks very similar to scarlet pimpernel, which is not advisable to eat and can be toxic. Common chickweed looks very similar to mouse-eared chickweed, but mouse-eared chickweed has hairs all around the stem. They have the same five petaled or 10 petaled flowers. They look very similar, but mouse-eared chickweed is not as pleasant to eat. Its leaves are covered with hairs and its stem is covered with hairs and it doesn't have that one strip on the stem. So again, here's a plant that I want you to know 
I want you to know it's history. In reality, this is an invasive weed throughout the world. An invasive weed that can compete with and outcompete native plants in its place. It can be a severe economic loss to agriculture. It can be a headache for gardeners that want to have their gardens organized and systematized. But it's a plant with a history and had so many food and uses in the past. So I just want you to really think about that. Thank you for watching this episode of Nature at Your Tour. It takes place right here just outside my door. I'm fascinated by these plants that grow around us that people call weeds, but actually have names and fascinating histories. I hope you enjoyed this watch in this episode. If you like what I do, please subscribe to my channel. Give me a like, and I love hearing comments and answering questions from my viewers. Please leave me a comment or a question that you might have, and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. See you at the next episode.